make a mash tun for your all grain brewing, you have to start with a cooler. I have this old cooler and it's given me 10 good years of beach parties and all that. But it's seen better days. The lid doesn't seal as good anymore and uh, it's the perfect candidate to become a mash tun. So I'm going to take you step by step. Step one is right here. You can see I removed the old drain valve. You just unscrew it with a wrench, take it out. And on the outside it was fine, but on the inside I just had to bore this out a little bit to fit my nipple. Now let me show you how that works. So what we have here is a two inch brass nipple. It's a half inch diameter by two inch length. And it fits right in there really tight. I actually have to thread it through and then give it some pressure and bury the threads all the way in and you can see over here it's sticking out on that side now as well next thing I'm going to do is add these to each side these are number 15 uh, standard o-rings you're just going to take them and put one on this side and put one on the other side as well there. forgot one thing so I removed the the half inch by two inch nipple and I'm going to put Teflon tape on both the threads this is just your standard um, water uh, you know for liquid Teflon tape and then I'll be putting the uh, the uh, ball valve on okay so now you can see here I have my ball valve uh, against the number 15 o-ring on the nipple. I'm going to go ahead and reinsert that back into the uh, to the cooler. Now on the inside I have my half, my nipple sticking through with a 15 o-ring around it and here I have a piece of copper that is half inch threaded female on one side and it's just a standard copper half inch on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and screw that on there and tighten this down. So here we go, I put that on and tightened it down. Uh, no, you don't have to totally smash the O-ring uh, to get a good seal, because I have it tightened, you know, hand tight plus maybe a half turn or so, you know, without smashing or displacing that O-ring. And then over here you can see we got no leaks happening on this side. Now a lot of people tell me you got to use washers and all that, but this had a tight seal, and so I'm not using any washers and I'm not getting any leak here. Um, if I did get some leak here, I might uh, go to the hardware store and try and get some uh, brass washers that will fit that. And then just turn the ball valve, and out it comes. Okay. Okay, now on the outside, I have this piece, which is a half-inch threaded male, not female. And on this side, it's your standard uh, copper female. What I'm going to do is just... I'm going to put some Teflon tape on this and then screw it in here. Then what, once I get that Teflon tape on and screw it in, I'm going to attach this, which this is just uh, standard plastic tubing you can get from your hardware store. This is 5 eighths diameter on the inside, 7 eighths on the outside. And I got 10 feet of it. I'm going to use it to go from my mash tun here down to my boil pot. One thing I forgot to mention to put that plastic tubing on here with the 5 eighths internal diameter, I have to put, this is a little bit bigger than a half inch, it's a female set to receive a half inch piece of copper. So what I have to do is I have to weld on maybe an inch or an inch and a half of standard half inch copper pipe. So I'm going to, and I'm going to do that before I put the Teflon tape on because this piece is going to get really hot when I do that. So we'll do that now. Okay, I'm going to try and do this all with one hand while one hand's holding the camera. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my piece here that we got to weld, which is the half-inch threaded male to the half-inch non-threaded female. I'm going to get that in my pliers. Because this is going to be hot. Okay, like so. And then next, I'm going to take my like inch and a half piece of uh, half inch pipe and I'm going to take one end and just put a little flux on it. 
or this is sometimes called soldering compound. And I'm just going to take it and work it in back and forth into the fitting. Okay. Okay, so next I'm going to take my torch and heat up this fitting. Usually you try and heat up the thickest part. Right at the tip of the light blue cone is where you want it. And the flux starts to sizzle. And I really, because I'm doing this with one hand, I made sure I really jammed the two pieces together tight. Okay, then once you got it hot, you just take the solder. You just touch it there. You just need a little bit. And that's it. Okay, so now the problem is I have flux inside there, which I needed to get a good con connection, but I don't want that in my ward. I don't want that in my beer. So we have here some carb cleaner. I'm just going to take it and pretty thoroughly, liberally spray all the inside, all the outside with carb cleaner. You know, I got this completely cooled off. I'm just going to let it have it. Okay, and that should clean out all the flux. Okay, so after using the carb cleaner, I washed it uh, thoroughly with soap and water, dried it, added the Teflon tape here, and then I'm going to go ahead and just screw this in to the end of my ball valve. And this is what I'm going to, uh, this is what I, right here now, this piece of half inch that we welded on, is what I'm going to attach that 5 eighths in diameter, 7 eighths outer diameter plastic tube, and that's what I'm going to let drain the wart into my boil pot. Uh, I'm in, of course, I'm just assembling it today, but in a couple days when I go to brew, I'm going to disassemble everything and wash everything with soap and water and then sanitize everything. Okay, so now you see this 5 eighths inch inside diameter plastic tubing easily fits on this half inch diameter copper tubing and then you're just going to get a hose clamp, standard hose clamp around there and tighten it down when it's time to uh, drain your mash when your wart's all done into your boil pot. If you open the valve here you can see it's just going to flow nicely out of there. Now I heard and the rate I was told to use is you go two cups every 90 seconds or one cup every 45 seconds is the rate in which you want to drain your wart. So that's what I'll be trying to target with that there. And we're going to cut a little piece off this plastic tubing for some for attaching our manifold, which is what we're going to do next. Now it seems to be a tradition that if you're going to make one of these homebrew videos, one of the things you have to do is have some homebrew while you're making it. And I don't have any right now. So what I have here is uh, cranberry wine that we made. Uh, we bought a thing of cranberry juice and it just wasn't any good. So we just turned it into cranberry wine by adding sugar and yeast. And then uh turned out pretty good. It's a little sweet, but it's pretty good. All right, on to the manifold. Okay, so the next step to do is to uh, measure the shortest length of the base of your cooler. And mine's about uh, 12 inches there. So I'm going to cut across the bottom. I'm going to have about uh, three going across. I've seen people do five. I've seen people just do two. I even see people who just do one stainless steel braided hose. But I'm going to go with uh, three. So I'm going to start by cutting three of those pieces now. Okay, so now i got my three pieces cut. And basically what we're going to do is put an elbow on the four corners. You know, like so. And then a T. 90 degree elbows on the four corners. And then a T. Here and here. Okay. Now some people solder all this together. 
I don't want to solder all this together because I want to be able to pull it all apart and wash it whenever I want and be able to know I'm getting it thoroughly clean. We're going to cut little pieces, measure and cut little pieces that go between the T's and the elbows. And I'm just going to dry fit it together without soldering. And then we're going to make a little attachment here to connect to our spigot. Okay. Okay, so I ended up cutting four three-inch pieces here to connect those up. And so this is basically what my manifold is going to look like here. This fluid is uh, vinegar. This copper, these, these elbows I had in plastic bags, so they're still fresh. But this pipe I just had hanging up, and it's got kind of oxidized. So I'm going to take some steel wool and this vinegar, clean it up, and then run a, I have a steel brush. I'm going to run down the middle too and just make sure I get it all clean before we start brewing in it. Now let me, uh, we're going to remove a section here and put in another piece here. It's going to help us connect to our to our spigot. So here I have the T, and I grabbed like another inch or two of pipe, and I sanded it and got it prepped, put flux in it, and I jammed it in there and twisted it a few times. So now I'm going to heat it up right on the tip of that uh, light blue cone, get it nice and hot, and then just touch the solder. Hard to do with one hand. That should be good. Okay. So now I'm going to take this outside. Let it cool. Take this outside. Hit it with the carb cleaner. Soap and water. Then dry it. Okay. So what I did was I had my middle piece of pipe there. And I actually it was like this. And what I did is I took an inch and I cut it out the middle. So with that inch that we took out, we're going to take this piece we just welded up, and I took the carb cleaner and soap and water and cleaned it. We're going to put it back together like this, and this will now be in the like so. So I'm going to put this all back in the cooler and let it soak for a couple hours in the vinegar and get it all cleaned up, and then I'll show you how to hook up the plastic hose. Let all this soak in the vinegar, and then I asked to clean it up pretty good. Still, new, still needs a little cleaning up, but I'll get that... Uh, because I'm going to have to clean it all again after I drilled all the holes on bottom. But you can see I'll have this piece here. And I'm just going to take and cut a piece of that plastic tubing that we were using. Uh, I'm going to cut like 8 inches off or so. And run a piece from here to here. And that's what's going to drain all the wart off into the boil pot. So I'm going to go ahead and just take a sharp steak knife and cut that right now. There it is, all assembled. I got the hose going over, and I got it full of water. I'm going to use this. I have it full to the very top with water, and I'm going to drain it out and measure it so I have an exact volume of this with the manifold in there. And then I'm going to take it apart, disassemble the whole thing, drill the notches in the bottom, and then reassemble it, and tomorrow's brew day. Okay, it's now the next day, and I took everything apart. I cleaned it with a good pipe brush, a good stiff bristle one, you know, after putting the uh, holes, all the snotches in the bottom of the copper piping. You really want equal, you want equal amount of water flow. You don't want like 15 notches over there and then only 10 notches over here. You want it to be equal so all the wart flows out evenly and you don't get a spot where you're just getting like a lot of hot water through and then a lot of sugar you didn't get over here because you had uneven flow. So I made sure the holes are really even. I got everything clamped down. I cleaned the cooler about 15 times. I've cleaned all the pipes out and now it's all set and as you can look up here I got my water boiling and I got some pumpkin in the oven there and I got my yeast starter going. But that's going to be it for this video on building the mash tun. It's all set to go. And I'll do a part two where I go over how I go ahead and finish brewing the beer.